asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Well, let's just get into a story that made um, me laugh today. I started with a funny story yesterday, the Auschwitz rap yesterday. I'm going to start with something I find amusing today. You mightn't find it amusing. In fact, my humour often doesn't translate. Other people often don't laugh. It's that famous old line, isn't it? They're not laughing with you, they're laughing at you. Um, this is a story that made me smile. Norway's Progress Party, which is an anti-immigration party, they are going to vote on banning the Islamic call to prayer, saying that it disturbs residents. However... The Muslim leaders in Norway have said that loudspeakers are not used anymore. There's a phone app that summons worshippers to prayer. Islam has gone all technical with phone apps and smartphones. So when it's time to go to prayers, and I think it's five days a week, is it prayers? Am I right? No, prayers five times a day, right? Five times a day. I must ask one of my... Um, Muslim friends to tell me five. I know there are five prayer times a day that's where I'm going wrong yeah so five times a day you could be called to prayer on your phone app so the Islamic leaders in Norway are saying this is much ado about nothing because we don't use the loudspeakers so the anti-immigration party are in government right they're part of a two party coalition so they've brought this up and they have a national conference coming this weekend and if the proposal passes, the ban would be adopted as official party policy. Party officials told um, <laughs> told locals that the call to prayer, which is issued over loudspeakers, is a headache for residents who uh, would be within ear reach or earshot of a mosque. A great many people perceive this as annoying and inappropriate. In Norway, we have freedom of religion, which should also include the right not to be exposed to public calls to prayer. And this is the proposal submitted by the local chapter of the Progress Party in a place called Buskerud County, west of Oslo. But the story's bizarre, right? Because Oslo's newspaper, Vart Land, they said it was unable to identify a single mosque in Norway that is currently or is planning to issue the call. This is like the People's Front of Judea. Isn't it? Let's ban something that actually isn't happening. Made me laugh that today. And I looked into it and it seems to be fairly typical. But it did remind me of something that I'm kind of ashamed of. I've been on this, I don't know, journey, a journey for some years in terms of my perception has been changing over the last 15 years or so about life and about things and about current affairs and geopolitics. But there was a time when I got my news exclusively from RTE in the Republic of Ireland and the BBC and I would have had, obviously I would have had a small mind, right? Because I was exposed only to these news sources, official news sources, so many, many, many moons ago, I went to Morocco with the future Mrs. Allen. Long time ago. And we went south in Morocco. We went out of the cities, down south, out of Tangiers, down south. And uh, this was long before I had my ep epiphany. So I'm, I'm, I'm owning up to something I'm not too proud of here. Um, so I was getting my news exclusively from the papers and from the news. And near a place called Fez in Morocco, I heard the call to prayer and shit myself <laughs> properly. I was like, what's that? What's that? Seen too many films, watched too many news reports about, about our Muslim brethren. And when I heard the call to prayer, well, I was a bit nervous. Allah. And this was us. And we were driving. So we were driving our own car. Get back in the car, Caroline. Caroline, get back in the car. Why, what is wrong? Get back in the car. Do you want to be beheaded? Get back in the f***ing car. 
<laughs> Get back in the car. So that was us. Obviously, travelling then in that part of the world and in other parts of the world, you get to see how incredibly wonderful and generous and brilliant and innovative and welcoming these people are. And then you're a little bit embarrassed about the stereotypes that you used to hold. But well, that's a true story. Heard that and I went, what the fuck is that? <laughs> get out of here. Anyway, shall we move on to matters more serious? Ten minutes past the hour. The Russian ambassador to the Netherlands has conducted a press conference today. You've probably seen this. It's been featured on RT. It was mentioned on Sky News. I'm not too sure about the BBC. And I'm not too sure how much of the conference was carried by UK mainstream media in terms of broadcast media, right? So you know by now that on April 7th, the United States, the UK and France alleged that chemical weapons were used in Douma and that it was on the orders of the Assad government. We don't believe that. And of course, no proof was offered. A couple of days later, there was a joint US-UK-French airstrike on Syria, completely illegal. Well, the Russians are saying they have children. Not that they have children, but they have met children and indeed they have presented a child that was used by a White Helmets medical team to simulate an attack or to fake this attack on April 7th. And they presented children today or a child who was in the White Helmet video which Western media, you will remember, used as proof that there had indeed been an attack. You'll remember it. Chaotic scenes of people and children being hosed down. Well, it's been alleged that the people who had been unwittingly used in the video to stage the attack, well, they've now come forward to say there was no attack. And speaking at The Hague today, an 11-year-old boy called Hassan Diab who was featured in the original clip of the alleged chemical attack in Duma. He joined other witnesses to describe the events of April 7th. And what he said was, he said, we were at the basement and we heard people shouting that we needed to go to a hospital. We went through a tunnel. At the hospital, they started pouring cold water on me. Amazing. And he told this to assembled media um, at a press conference which was which was set up by Russia's mission at the Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in The Hague. Staggering revelations, I suppose, for people who only get their information from the BBC, Sky, ITV, Channel 4, Fox and so on. Not staggering for the likes of you and me. I'm not surprised by this. Now, the young boy Hassan was in the video being washed by water hoses in this controversial White Helmets video that was released. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see tomorrow whether the UK broadsheet media picks up on this, whether they report on the conference today at the OPCW in The Hague, because it's very embarrassing for the UK, French and US governments that people are saying, well, we were used to stage an attack that never happened. Now, interestingly enough, our friend Philip Giraldi, who's a regular guest on this programme, former counter-terrorism officer at the CIA, he told Russia Today yesterday that the airstrikes against Syria by the US, the, the, the UK and France were staged themselves, sort of. He said they were staged to avoid any Russian casualties. This is Phil Giraldi. Well, I think the attack was uh, deliberately staged in a way uh, to avoid casualties for the Russians. I think that was uh, that has come out subsequently that that was a deliberate decision. And I think that was a good decision. I think it was a bad decision to do it at all. Uh, I believe that the uh, um, the White House should have done what we would consider in the media to be a fact check to find out what actually had happened in Syria and they would have discovered that actually at that point they knew nothing about what had happened in Syria and they were making judgments based on what they thought were the way the Syrians uh, were behaving. Very good, Phil Giraldi there. So you even wonder about the strike itself, the US-UK-French strike, you wonder about the veracity of that. Did it hit anything? 
Ramon is tweeting the program. Good evening, Ramon. Uh, Richie, Dutch media reported on the press conference with the Duma <laughs> so-called victims. They ridiculed it as Russian propaganda and did all they could to make it look like fake news. Scandalous and outrageous, says Ramon. Thanks for that. You must be in the Netherlands then, Ramon, so you've um, been able to see the coverage of it there. As I said, it was mentioned... It was mentioned on Sky News. And to be fair to Sky News, they did give the gist of what was happening. They did acknowledge that the Russians had Syrians whom were featured in the White Helmets video and those people were claiming that it was set up. So Sky did that much anyway, right? I've bashed and battered Sky News for more years than I care to remember and I will continue to do so, no doubt, and the BBC. But when they... When they are doing it right, which isn't very often, you've got to say, fair enough, they're doing it right. Right. This is the Richie Allen Show. And it's live right now. Host Mr Mojo said, you're having a half day, Richie. It's well for some. I'd love to have a half day. Now, I've been at it all day, really. It's just, um, um, I've got a prior engagement later on. We've got an action-packed hour, which we're in the middle of. We'll do Sunday View on Sunday and then I have a week off. I'll tell you more about that as well. Cartoon Drunk tweets, Richie, it would be interesting knowing the viewing figures of RT compared to the other mainstream media news channels in the UK. But it isn't on any carrier in the UK. As far as I understand, RT isn't on the Sky package. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I get my channels through Virgin Media, sadly. I don't have much choice. I say sadly. I'm not thrilled with Virgin Media. So so if you are getting your TV through Sky, is RT on there? I hope it is. At least for some sort of opposition to the to the bull crap that you normally get. But I'm not sure if it is. Is it? Is it only available online, RT? I have no idea. Let me know if it's available on Sky. 16 and a half minutes. Uh, nearly 17 minutes past the hour. Hi to Moinga, to Faisal. One or two people saying they're having issues with the programme in terms of getting the stream. We're, we're streaming loud and clear. I've got a monitor here with richieallen.co.uk and it's absolutely fine. We're not having any issues there. Um, so um, if you are having problems, I apologise for that, but I can't see what's happening. Uh, my end, it looks absolutely hunky-dory, my end. Hi to David Stanford, by the way. Right, let's move on. There's much to talk about. There is much to talk about. Now, Donald Trump will be here on July 13th, which is a Friday, Friday, July 13th. It's been announced today. And because the US president is arriving, I've got a beautiful bit of virtue signalling for you. It's not the countdown, it's not the charts, but it deserves a special place all on its own. And I've got it lined up for you here. You know, Owen Jones, the prole pretender. Every time I say that, somebody says, Richie, what the effing hell does prole pretender mean? It means that he claims to be a member of the proletariat, but he isn't or anything like it. He's a fake socialist, basically. The king of the virtue signal. Signal. The king of the virtue signal. Owen Jones. Well, he was on Sky News today to talk about the Windrush scandal, which you know all about now. And he loves a bit of that, Owen Jones. Loves a bit of it. I don't like this man. There's no point pretending that I'm in any way objective here. I don't like him at all. Anyway, after his Windrush rant, right? And he loved it. Virtue signalling about migrants and the downtrodden and all of that. He loves it. Kay Burley asks him about Donald Trump. What are you going to do, Owen? Donald Trump will be on these shores, and he will be on these shores on Friday, July 13th. Owen Jones was never going to miss an open goal like that. Yeah, Owen Jones. Here he is. I know you'll bear with me, gents, because we are out of time, and normally we have an awful lot of time to talk, but just a quick word before we let you go. Owen... At 13th of July, what will you be doing? Will you be celebrating Donald Trump coming to the United Kingdom? 
I will be on the streets along with, I hope, as many people watching as possible. We've got a massive demonstration lined up for that day and it's time to speak out against the bigotry, yes. the anti-Muslim hatred, uh, the misogyny that this man represents and to say that British people, the majority of people in this country, want a good relationship with the United States on, so we abhor everything that Trump and Trumpism stands for and that kind of hatred and bigotry and we can see where it leads. We've seen in this country where that sort of bigotry leads has to be confronted. So I hope everybody watching this spread the word let's all be out on the streets let's have a carnival against hatred when donald trump uh, enters and give him a good british welcome get in owen jones there talking about trumpism what a hysterical little bollocks he is but he's great entertainment isn't he what a fake i oh, stop richie leave it alone leave it alone Tiger Johnson and my friend Nathan from the Brilliant Sex Pistols Experience are among the listeners who've told me that 512 on channel, on Sky, is where you can find RT. I'm glad to hear that. So if you do get your television through Sky, you will be able to watch RT on 512. I have to get it through Virgin. And... um, we don't get it. So if I want to watch it, I've got to watch it online, which I do occasionally as I monitor all the channels. Good evening to my friend and colleague, Jean Ann Crowley. Oh God, how terminally tedious, says Jean Ann, who must be referring to Owen Jones. He's a genius, absolute genius. Keep the tweets coming in. It's at Richie Allen Show on Twitter. 20 minutes past the air. Don't forget, Anne Whittacombe is on the programme today. If you want snowflaking, virtue signalling beyond virtue signalling RT was a good place today and yesterday there's a Broadway star a woman called Sierra Bogges or Bogges now she's actually pulled out of a BBC Proms production of West Side Story over claims of whitewashing now she's a white American actress and she was going to play Maria now I hate musicals musicals I hate. I can say hate in the same sentence as musicals. I despise them. It is in theatre. And I hope my actress friend, my genius pal in Cleggan, would acknowledge that musicals are not art. And if you like them, I couldn't give a shite. I hate them. I hate them with a passion. I really do. I turn into Homer Simpson when musicals are anywhere near me. When I'm in Manchester, near the great theatres in the city, and I see this, the, the posters for them. I start to get goosebumps. I start not, not out of excitement. I start, my skin starts to crawl. Anyway, this woman was going to be at the proms and she was going to be singing some of Maria's songs from West Side Story. But she pulled out over a Twitter storm. Over a Twitter storm. Because of whitewashing. Twitter users told her to stop taking roles from actors of colour. Right? So the award-winning Bogues, Bogues, Sierra Bogues, or Bogues, Bogues, she announced that she would be stepping down. She said taking on the role would be a huge mistake because it would deny ethnic actors, she should have said actresses, of course, it would deny them the importance of seeing themselves represented on stage. So Eva Vidal is a black comedian and writer She said that Sierra Bodges made the right decision because roles for ethnic actors are already limited. Here is Eva Vidal speaking with RT. There aren't a lot of opportunities for ethnic minority actors as it is. So to have roles taken away from you for, you know, that are are supposed to be cast as ethnic minorities, it's not very good. But of course, bearing in mind that this is a a concert, a performance of the songs itself, not the actual stage musical, she's not really acting as such. Doesn't that make a difference? She's merely singing the songs. No, I don't think it does. I think it's absolutely the same thing. She's performing a role that is a Latina role, or singing the songs that, you know, from somebody else's culture, it's not very good. Right, so some people would say this is political madness 
gone crazy yeah. and the, bearing in mind she's already done it before and there seemed yeah. to be no fuss but what, why now do you think this is becoming such a sensitive issue? Because people are waking up a little bit more we've got social media we've got people giving their opinions on stuff like that I mean there was the same similar kind of row with Tilda Swinton taking a, a role for an Asian actress the same with Matt Damon as well oh, Jesus and people Christ. just don't tolerate it anymore and actually they don't really they're not very successful these days because people have had enough of it well, it, but interesting enough, if we look at you know Ben Kingsley, for example, playing Gandhi, yeah. or, or even uh, Othello being played by one of our great actors. Um, uh, of course, it was yes. um, Laurence Olivier. Wasn't Good it? point. So, if we have uh, brilliant stage actors like yes. Laurence Olivier around now, yeah. do you think there'll be an outcry if you were to play Othello? I think there would, because as we've just mentioned, times have changed. People are becoming more aware of these sensitive issues and are addressing them. So even if somebody's a brilliant actor, actress, yeah. and they're white, and they're denied playing a role of somebody of another ethnicity, yeah. they could say, that's racist, couldn't they? Well, no. There's, first, well, we could get into the whole discussion. Because it's role Because we're talking about white people. role playing. There's no institutionalised racism against white people, so that doesn't exist. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, Mary, and Holy Saint Joseph. Well, I can't go to karaoke anymore with the future Mrs. Allen, because I'm a big fan of singing Lionel Richie songs, like a bit of Lionel Richie, a bit of Stevie Wonder, a bit of uh, Ray Charles occasionally, sometimes a bit of Aretha Franklin. Can't sing those because they, black singers sung those songs. This is absolute fucking... I mean, this is rubbish beyond rubbish, isn't it? This is absolute snowflakery in the extreme. Why shouldn't this woman, who isn't playing the part, by the way, why shouldn't she sing those songs at the proms? Why should she give in to some absolute fools on social media who... Who pays attention to anybody on Twitter or social media anyway? I mean, I don't. Couldn't give a damn what anybody thinks of me or what I say or what I do. So why does anybody else... I don't understand it. Oh, you can't do that because you're taking the place of an ethnic actress. Ah, piss off. I'm a singer. I'm a very good singer and I'm going to sing the songs. Piss off. Crazy. The RT guy was good. Tied her up a knot. She had nowhere to go. This is very silly, but of course it has more sinister undertones, of course, doesn't it? Doesn't it really? Here's a BBC story that's very spooky and it's about mental health education in primary schools. Yes. Mental health counsellors are going to schools to speak to primary school children. It is alleged that this will stop truancy and it will save, yeah, and it will save the taxpayer a lot of money in years to come because these kids will less likely, they will be less likely to become criminals. This is unbelievable. And this story was buried at the very end of BBC News broadcast today even though it is a major story with major implications for the well-being of young children. Won't somebody please think of the children? I'm not virtue signalling here. This is madness. Have a listen to the clip. This is from BBC News 24 today. We'll have a little bit of a chat about it when we come back. Now, offering mental health counselling to primary school pupils could help reduce school truancy and crime. That's according to a new report. The charity Pro Bono Economics says early help, such as one-to-one -one support, can help boost the life chances of children and bring economic benefits too. Catherine Burns reports. If you're feeling sad and worried, you could talk to a place to be and they might... Uh, and you might feel happy. A glowing recommendation from eight-year-old Charlie. The children's mental health charity Place to Be provides emotional support at schools across the UK. It asked researchers from the group Pro Bono Economics to put a financial value on its work with primary pupils. The report predicts that every child who has individual counselling through the charity could benefit by £5,700. That's mostly because they're one day expected to go on and get jobs and earn higher wages. They're also less likely to cost society in the future by needing different kinds of help. It shows in monetary terms what we know as clinicians. If we get in there early, when there are first signs of difficulty, of upset, of behaviour or of distress, then that won't translate into mental health problems later on in life. That is incredible. That was Sarah Kendrick of the charity Place to Be, which is behind this, 
Who identifies that a child is stressed and then decides the child needs mental health counselling? This is an absolute outrage. This is, do you know this named person in Scotland that caused so much this scheme to have a named person outside the family to monitor the well-being of every child? This scheme in England, um, to be rolled out in the UK, is named person by the back door. It's disgraceful. And some of the children you're going to hear from have already spoken to some of these mental health counsellors. And it's like listening to Step for Children. Do you want to hear this? Do you want to hear this? I'm not doing this for laughs either. Listen to this. If I've had home troubles or school troubles, I could go to place to be and talk to Elizabeth and, and she would and she would lift the weight off my shoulders. You can sh share your emotions and your feelings and you won't get in trouble for spreading anything. When I didn't have um, as much friends as other people, I went to a place to be and she told me to be more confident. It can get you something very important in life and it's called a friend. Place to be has helped me with my singing and my attitude. And now I'm going to sing a bit of a song. Happiness will find me, leave the past behind me. Today my life begins. Oh, Catherine Burns, BBC News. Catherine Burns from BBC News. That was a six-year-old boy there talking about it helped me with my attitude. You can hear it. I will do what I am told. I will never say anything that I am not supposed to say. Who calls in the charity mental health workers? Because it ain't the parents by the sound of it. And the report was so badly put together. The journalist obviously didn't make that point by asking these people who initiates the intervention. Is it the teacher? Is it the head teacher? Is it the parent? Is the parent aware of, of this going on? Is the parent consulted before the child is sent to see a mental health counsellor? Because the child might have a bit of anxiety. Because the child might have acted out in a lesson. Acting out. Which is the right thing for a child to be doing when they're told to sit in a very uncomfortable uniform and not move for hours on end. It's dangerous stuff, this. A story buried down the back end of the BBC afternoon 24, the BBC 24 afternoon broadcasts. Mental health interventions for primary school children. Can't end well, that, can it? Can't end well.